Hello everyone, this is Dragonlord, and welcome to episode 4 of How to Build the Quidditch Pitch in Minecraft. And today will be the final episode of this series, because all we have to do now is the Quidditch stands in between all of the towers. And so in the previous episode, we built all of our tower designs, and if you have followed the same colour scheme as me, then feel free to just follow along with the colours that I do. Of course, at the end of the video, I will be showing the colour scheme for my entire Quidditch pitch. However, just like with the previous video, I will only be showing each of the main sections, and then of course, you can just repeat it around the Quidditch pitch. And again, just like with the Quidditch Towers, there will be a lot of repetition in these designs because we're basically copying the same design across the entire pitch. And also, if you are enjoying the series, then a like and a subscribe would be hugely appreciated. But anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into it. And so, the first section we're going to build is going to be this middle Quidditch stand right here. And luckily, it is a very, very simple design, basically just repeats down the entire length of the pitch. And so let's just get started. And so we are going to continue with our checkerboard pattern in this area right here. So let's start off with two blocks this time. We're not going to do four just because this is not a multiple of four length of blocks long. And so two, and then one, two, three, four, 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 and then a final block there. And just like in the last episode, we will build these up so that they are four blocks tall. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then just build those all the way up along the entire way. And there we go, those are those checkable patterns along there. And then once again, we have to repeat the same thing on top, except with the alternating colour. One, two, three, four, all the way up. And this is going to be three of these tall in total. So we'll do another one up here. And that is the main design. And so now all we need to do is to just continue this along all the way to fill out this entire area. And there we go, that will go in just like that. And then along the top, we'll place in a row of spruce slabs going all the way along, and that will be this half complete. And so now moving onto the back, the back consists of a sort of crisscross pattern that goes all the way around this area. And so we will start off in this corner here and come out one, two, three, and on the fourth block, build up five more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, and then leave four blocks. One, two, three, four, five blocks. One, two, three, four, five, the same thing. One, two, three, four, on the fifth block, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and you should have three blocks on the end just like that. And then build across the beam to bring off the top of this section right here. And so all of these sections should be a four by four section wide aside from the end sections, which will be three wide and four tall. And then next, we need to do this twice more. And so once again, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, just building up on all of these pillars that we've already built. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then once again, building a beam across. And then the same thing, one more time. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And then a final beam along the top. And then on top, we'll build in a line of spruce fences. And that'll be this back section almost complete. And there we go, that will go in just like this. And then all we do now is to add in the crisscross pattern, which goes in all of these separate squares. And so let's go to this one right here, which is to the right of the center line. And let's place in one spruce there just like that. And then underneath one, and then another one, 
and just build this going all the way up until it reaches the upper corner and that will go in just there and then move on to the next one and this time we'll build up one that's going the opposite way so this one will meet this one in the middle so once they're here and then upside down once there upside down one square upside down and then one there and then finally on this one we'll do the same thing one here one upside down one here one upside down and then one here and of course it is interrupted by the quidditch tower but that is okay and then once again the same thing on the other side just repeating it in a nice zigzag fashion and so it's there here upside down stair upside down stair upside down stair and then the same thing going the opposite way a stair upside down stair upside down a stair upside down and then a stair and then once again the same thing going to this tower here so once again a stair upside down a stair upside down and then a, another stair and there we go that will go in just like this and then all we need to do now is to just repeat the same thing on every single layer so once again on this layer we'll start off with a stair here and then one upside down a stair one upside down a stair one upside down and then a, another stair and just repeat that pattern for all of these sections along here and there we go that should look like this once you have done those on all three layers and then all we have to do is to link these two sections together just to provide some sort of structural integrity and so we'll go to all of these sections where it crisscrosses and place in one block here and then come across one two blocks with some fences and then another spruce plank block just there just to provide some sort of fictional integrity and we'll do that in all of the other crisscross sections so one here two blocks across and then another block right there the same thing here one one two and then one same thing here one one two and then one and then the same thing on this final one here one block two stairs and then a final block there just like that and then what i like to do is to just add in a line of trapdoors that just go along this line right here that just make it look like this wall is held up by some stands and just once again adding in that fictional sense of having some sort of structural integrity and then underneath all of these blocks we can then place in a line of fences going all the way down to the ground just like this. And there we go, that will go in just like this. And then we'll do a line of fences going all the way along on the top of the supports right here. And then on top of these fences, we'll then place in another line of spruce trapdoors because of course, these are where our spectators are going to stand. There we go. And then on all of these supports here, we'll build up two blocks, one, two, and then three, one, two, three, and do that for every single one. So two here, one, two, and then one, two, three. The same thing here, one, two, one, two, three. Same thing here, one, two, one, two, three. And then again, one, two, one, two, three. And then we'll just have to build in another line of trapdoors going all the way along. Of course, it is a little bit of a pain so have to crouch the entire time just go ahead and place in your second and third layer of spectator stands just like this And then our fourth layer can go along this row as well. And those would be our Quidditch stands complete for this first section. And there we go. That area will look just like this. And now let's move on to the second section. And so just like with the first section, the second section is a very similar manner of just continuing this checkable pattern around and then the crisscross pattern 
on the back side. And also due to the shaping of the pitch, we are going to collide with these fences along here. And so just remove them along the line of this checkable pattern right here, because we will have blocks going in this area. And so once again, we'll place in two blocks here and then go along four blocks, one, two, three, four, four blocks, one, two, three, four, four blocks, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then a final block here. And then once again, fill them all up so they are all four blocks tall, and then continue the checkable pattern up three more layers. And so that is the first layer, and then we will use the opposite colors for the second, and then return back to this color pattern for the third layer. And there we go, that will go in just like this. And then we can replace this block with a spruce stair. And then once again, continue along with a line of spruce slabs going along the entire length, just to cap off the wall. And then we can move on to the back side. And once again, in a very similar fashion, we're going to build a very, very similar crystals pattern. However, of course, it will be along the curve, so it might be a little bit more complicated. And so we'll start off building up five blocks on this block here on the left of this section. So one, two, three, four, five, and then come across four blocks. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, four blocks, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, four blocks, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, four blocks, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And once again, we will have three blocks remaining. And then once again, we need to build a beam that joins all of these blocks together. However, this time it won't be a straight line like in the previous section. We will have to mirror what is happening underneath us. So paying attention to this layer here, we'll come across one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, and then one, and then one, two, three, and then one, one, two, three, and then one, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, just like that. And then once again, do this two more times. So one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then once again, beam it off in the same fashion. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one block, one, two, three, one, two, three, one block, one block, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, just like this. And then once again, do it one more final time. And so one, two, three, four, five, lethal blocks, one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one block, one, two, three, one, two, three, one block, one, two, three, another block, and then one, two, three, four. And then once again, we can line this off with a line of spruce fences going across just like this. And our deer is doing that annoying glitch again. That is very irritating. And then next, we once again need to add in the crisscross pattern. And again, it will be a little bit different because we are building on a curve. And so we'll start off on the left side right here. And we'll start off actually, instead of building one block in, we'll start off building on this block right here and build up with one stair, upside down, another stair, upside down, another stair, upside down, and then another stair. And so you'll notice it does end indented, but it starts off not and that will be quite a common recurrence. And then for the next square, we'll place in one stair here, and then one upside down, and then you'll build in another block upside down, because this one will be going across one block on its journey up. And so once again, continue in that fashion, and that will go in just like that. And then the next one, we'll start off with a stair here, upside down, stair here, upside down, stair here, upside down, and then a final stair there. And in the next one, we will do the same thing we did with this one right here. And so we'll start off with one stair here, one upside down, and then another one upside down, and then continue going up just like this with one stair here, 
and then an upside down stair right there. And then we'll repeat the same thing for this one here, how this one will be a normal one. And so one block here, upside down, upside down, upside down, one block, upside down, and then another block. And then this one will be a very similar fashion, but it's in one block here, upside down, and then one block, upside down, one block, and then another one upside down, just in there. And there we go, that is the first layer of the crisscross pattern going all the way across. And all we need to do now is to repeat this onto the other two layers. And there we go, that will look just like this. And then once again, we can add in our line of structural supports by placing in one block here and then going across with two spruce fences and then another block here. And the same thing at all of the crisscross points along this layer. So one block there, one block, two fences, another block, one block, two fences, another block, one block, two fences, and then another block. And there we go, that will go in just like that. And then once again, a line of spruce fences going all the way on the top, just like this. And of course, you will have to navigate around the pitch bending just a little bit, but that is okay. We'll just place in another spruce fence here. And that goes all the way around just like that. And oh, what is what's happened here? That is not meant to be here. No idea what happened there. We'll go ahead and replace that back to how it was. There we go. And then once again, we'll place in two fences on this one and then three going up. And the same thing here. One, two, one, two, three. 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 And then finally, all we need to do is to add in all of the spruce fences. Yes, there are going to be a lot of spruce trapdoors in this episode, and they are going to be an absolute pain to use because the fence hitboxes are so small, but that's okay, we will manage. And so that will go in just like that. And then the next layer, we'll do the exact same thing, just going all the way around matching the pattern of the first layer. And of course, right now, I am not really caring about the orientation of my spruce trapdoors. You'll notice some of them go in different crisscross patterns. Of course, if that bugs you, do you feel free to make them all go in the same direction? But honestly, I do not really mind at all, just because there is so much trapdoor placing in this episode. And that will go in just there. And then the same thing for the next layer. We'll just go around continuously and layer this all the way up. And at points like this, where you do encounter the stands, just put around them, it doesn't really matter. There are just so many Squidditch seats, it doesn't matter at all. And so that will continue along all the way. And then once again, we'll miss out this block here and go along there. And then in the remaining areas, just place in some more trapdoors, just to fill up all of those gaps, just to make sure that no one, you know, falls through the Quidditch stands. And so we'll do three here, and then two there, two there, and then two there, just like that. And there we go, that is the second section now done. And you guessed it, the third section will begin with once again using our colored wool. And so for this third section, I will be using the yellow wool and the gray wool. And so this time we'll start off with one block here and then four blocks, one, two, three, four, 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 and then one, two, three, just like that. And then once again, we just pull this up so it is all four blocks tall. And then just repeat that checkable pattern for the next two layers. And then once you have done that, we'll then once again place in a line of spruce slabs going all the way along the top, just like this. And then on the back, once again, we need to add in that crisscross pattern. And so it does become increasingly complex as our curve increases. And so we'll start off with five blocks up on this block here. One, two, three, four, five. And then leave four blocks. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, five. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And then once again, all we to do is to add in the beam going across, once again, mirroring what is going on beneath us. And so two blocks here, and then two blocks here, one block there, one block there, and then two blocks in the middle, just like that. And then two blocks, and then two blocks, and then one block, one block, and then two blocks, and then one block here, one block here, and one block there. And then once again, we need to do this two more times. And so one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then once again, fill out this beam going across. So one block there, two blocks here, two blocks here, two blocks, two blocks, one block, one block, two blocks, two blocks, two blocks, and then one block, one block, two blocks, and then one block, and then one, two, three, and then the final layer, one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then once again, the beam going all the way across. One, two, one, two, one block, one block, two blocks, two blocks, one block, two blocks, one block, and then one, two, three, and then once again, a line of spruce fences going along all the way at the top. And then we need to add in the crisscross pattern again. And so once again, more and more of these sections will be indented in like this one here as the curve becomes stronger. And so we'll start off with placing one block here and then come into here and place in one block here, up to down. And this one actually will just go all the way straight up, just like this, repeating it, alternating between a upside down block and a straight up block. And then moving on to the next one, We'll start off here with one block here, one block here, one block here, and then we'll come out and place in another block here, one upside down, one here, one upside down, and then one here. And then coming around, we'll place in one block here, one block here, one upside down, coming up, one, upside down, one, upside down, and then one, and then the next one, one, upside down, one, upside down, and then another one upside down, and then one block here, and then another block here, and then another block upside down, and then another block there, just like this. And then the next one will place in one block here, one block upside down, upside down, another block, and then another block, and then another block upside down, and then one more block here, more block here, and one more block there, just like that. And then for the final section, we'll place in one block here, one block upside down, and then another block upside down, and then a straight block, and then an upside down block, and then a straight block there, and that will be that section just like that. And so of course it was a bit more complicated because we are now building on steeper angles. And so what we do now is to repeat this onto the other two layers. And there we go, that will look just like this. And then once again, we do need to add in those supports. And so once again, a block here, and then two spruce fences, and then another block. The same thing here, one block, two fences, and then another block. Same thing here, one block, two blocks, one block. And then the fourth one, this gap is actually four blocks wide, and so I'll place it one block, and then three, one, two, three, and then another block right there, and then one block, one, two, three, and then another block, and then one block, and then one, two, three, and then another block right there. And then we'll add in our line 
of spruce fences going all the way along just like this just to add in our spectator stands and it appears I've built this first one one block too high so let's go ahead and fix that yeah that will go in on that one that is my bad and then all we need to do now is to add in a line of spruce trapdoors on top And then repeat that for the second and third layer and so another layer going along in here and as just like before as it does get even more tighter on the corners then there will be less room for these potato stands but that's okay we'll just have to try and navigate around it the best we can and that will go around just like this and then a another line of spruce trapdoors on top and then a third layer in the remaining section so we'll place one fence here couple going along there, another one here, some going along right there, two right there, a couple going along right here. Of course it does become increasingly difficult. Two here, one here going along. Just like this and then once again a line of two trapdoors going all the way on top. just like that and then once again on any remaining blocks whether any holes just place in a, another line of trap doors just to make sure no one is falling out of the quidditch stands but there should only be a few and this number should get less and less the steeper the turn gets and so there we go that is the third section now complete and so the fourth and final section will extend from this end of the quidditch tower all the way across to the center of the pitch and then of course that would be one quarter of the stands complete and so once again we'll continue around with our checkable pattern this time using red wool and yellow wool so the first thing we're going to do actually is to mark off the center of the pitch which is going to be this block right here and just build up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and that will mark the center of the pitch. And then on the left side, we'll place in four blocks. One, two, three, four. Alternate, one, two, three, four. Alternate again, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. And then four more blocks, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, just like that. And then once again, build it up so they are all four blocks tall. And then again, add on the second and third layers by alternating the colors to make a, another checkable pattern. So we'll have yellow wool here and then red wool and continue that round all the way until it is three layers tall in total. And then the next step we're going to do, of course, is to once again, just build a line of spruce slabs going all the way along the top of this layer right here, all the way down to the middle. Of course, this will of course extend all the way around onto that side as well and then it is time to build the back section and so what we're going to do is we're going to leave three blocks first one two three and then build up five more blocks so one two three four five and then leave three blocks one two three and then five one two three four five and then now we will return 
to our four blocks. One, two, three, four, five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And if you have them like me, you'll have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five. And this would be perfectly in the center of the pitch. That is very, very convenient. And then once again, we will of course build up the beam along this layer here. Once again, of course, mimicking the layer beneath. So one, two, three blocks there, one, two, three blocks there, and then one block here, two blocks here, and then one block there. Once again, just mirroring this pattern on the floor. One block here, two blocks, one block, one block, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, just doing that straight across. And then once again, you'll repeat this pattern two more times. And so, one, two, three, four, five, 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 and one, two, three, four, five, and then build the beam across. So one there, one, two, three here, three blocks here, one, two, three, and then a block, and then a block, and then two blocks, and then one block, and then one block here, two blocks across, one, two, and then another block right there, and then one block, one block, one block, and then one, two, and then three, and then once again, repeat this one final time. And there we go, that will go on just like this. And then once again, a line of spruce fences on the top. And then once that is done, we can start work on the crisscross pattern. And so the crisscross pattern is once again, very, very similar. Of course, it'll be very straightforward for these sections here because they are perfectly straight. However, we will go ahead and start off with these two diagonal ones because this time you won't be using stairs, we will be using some planks and some slabs. And so start off with placing in one block here and then a slab on top and then build up one, two, three, break these two blocks and then another slab underneath and then one block here just like that. And then we can build the same thing on the other side, one block here, one block here with a slab on top and then build up one, two, three, break these two blocks, and then a slab underneath. And there we go, those would be those diagonal patterns there. And then for the remaining ones, we will continue back to our staircase design. And so place in one block here, one upside down, another block, and then one upside down, another upside down, and then one block up, and then one block upside down, another one upside down, and then another block going up, just like that. And then coming around, we'll place in one block here, one upside down, one straight, one upside down, another upside down, one straight, one upside down, and then one straight. And then this one over here, we'll start off with one normal one, upside down, up, upside down, and then upside down, and then up, upside down, upside down and then up just like that and then this one here will just go in a straight line going up so one here upside down normal upside down normal upside down and then a normal one and then for the final one we'll go with a very simple straight upside down normal upside down normal upside down and then a normal one and there we go that is the crisscross pattern going all the way around that layer. So once again, we will repeat this two more times until it fills up the entire area. And there we go, that will go in just like that. And then once again, we can connect this layer and this layer together with our supports. However, of course, this time, we are basically building on a diagonal. So we won't build across straight, we'll just build in a diagonal fashion. So one block here, and then continue that all the way along until it hits this wall here. And then in between, you can place in some spruce fences, just to make it look like it is connected together. So that will go in just like that. The same thing, this one here, diagonally, all the way across, and then another one here. And then once again, spruce fences in all of the diagonal gaps. And then we'll do another one, the diagonal of this one, one block, one block, and then another block. And then once again, our spruce fences all the way. And then for the next one, because we are 
slightly straighter, we'll go ahead and place in one block here, two blocks across, and then another block right there. And then you can place in some fences in between there as well. And then for this next one, we'll go across two blocks, and then two blocks here, because of course it is straightening out very slowly. And then this one is basically straight across, so you can place in one block, and then return back to our fences, and then place in another spruce plank. And then for this one, of course, will be perfectly straight. So one block, two fences, and then another block. And there we go. Those are those connections coming in. And you can sort of see they sort of roughly align with the gradient of the curve. And then, once again, some spruce fences going all the way to the top, just along this pattern. And this, of course, is where our spectator stands are going to sit upon. So let's bring these round all the way across. Just like that. And then once again, place in some spruce trapdoors on top, and that will be our first layer of stands complete. And then next, we'll add in our second layer of fences, and so you can go ahead and start boiling those around. And whenever we go over, one of these supports is placed in another fence block. And so let's continue these round going all the way along. And then once again, a line of spruce trap doors on top. And then our third layer of fences going up three blocks this time. One, two, three. And then continue that round with another layer. And of course, once again, we are getting quite close to the edge, but that is okay. We can just navigate around it. And then our line of trap tools on top once again. And then in the remaining gaps, we'll then fill them up with some fences. And then once again, just tie them off with some spruce trap doors, just to make sure all of the gaps in the stands are filled. So two more here with some fences, and then a, another one that is here with a fence, and then another one here as well. And then you can have a trap door there, and then another one here, another one here, and then another one here, here, here and here and here. Once again, with trapdoors on top. And yes, there are so, so many trapdoors in this build. I am so sorry if you are doing this on survival. And there we go. Those are those sections now complete. And so there we go. That is a quarter of the pitch now done. And so it just means from now on, all we need to do is to just continue this pattern around the entire rest of the Quidditch pitch. Yes, it is extremely repetitive. I remember when I was building this for the first time, it was an absolute nightmare. However, World Edit definitely came in handy, and also the stat command and the mask command. It was actually a really fun time for me to learn how to use mask command, and it was definitely very, very useful. And so now I'll go ahead and show you what the color scheme is, at least on my Quidditch pitch, for the remaining three sides. And so here we are in my planning world. This is where I mapped out every single step of the Quidditch tutorial. But as you can see, we have built this section, this section, this section, and this section. And so you will continue around the pattern, going with your Gryffindor colors, and then switch to Slytherin, back to Ravenclaw, and there's a Hufflepuff, and then Ravenclaw, back to Gryffindor, and then Slytherin, and then Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and then Slytherin, and that will be the entire 
Quidditch pitch now complete. And oh my gosh, the Quidditch hoops, how could I forget? And so finally, the Quidditch hoops, they do have a very, very simple design. And so we'll go ahead and go onto the center line of our Quidditch pitch and come out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks and place in five smooth stone going up, one, two, three, four, five. And of course, our center hoop is the tallest. And so this hoop is 34 blocks tall and we will use some diorite walls. Unfortunately, there's nothing really that is a white wall that actually looks very nice. You could use andesite walls if you are part of the diorite hating gang. However, I personally don't actually mind diorite too much. I actually really like polished diorite as a textured block with some of my medieval builds. But anyway, 34 blocks up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 32, 33, 34, just like that. And then we'll place in a smooth quartz slab and then a smooth quartz stair and then another one upside down on the other side and then a direct wall on either side and then another stair, another stair and then a quartz slab. And there we go, that is one of our hoops. And one thing I really like doing actually is just grabbing a snowball and just firing it through. It's actually really, really fun. One thing I love to do is to grab an elytra and give myself some fireworks and just fly around the Quidditch pitch and then throw the occasional snowball and try and get it through the hoop. There we go. And then just fly around with our fireworks and honestly it feels like we're in the Quidditch pitch itself. It's so so fun to pretend you're Harry or one of the other chasers and just fly around the Quidditch pitch and let's go ahead and try. Oh no we completely missed that. Let's give that another go. Let's give that another go for a more straight on approach and fire. Lovely that is so much fun. But anyway the remaining two Hoops, we'll move across and we'll leave a five block gap. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on this fifth block, we'll go in and place up one, two, three, four, five. And then this time we'll go up 18 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then once again, we'll build the exact same coop design using our slab two ups downstairs, two walls, two more stairs, and then another slab. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four. On the fifth block, go up one, two, three, four, five. However, this time we'll build up 23 blocks. So we have a short hoop, a medium hoop, and then the tallest hoop in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then once again, a quartz slab, two ups and down quartz stairs, and then two walls, another stair, another stair, and then a quartz slab. And there we go, those are our hoop designs. And then all we should do now is to repeat the same thing on the other side. However, it's not perfectly flipped because on the other side, the short hoop will be on this side, and the mini hoop on the other side. So it's not a completely perfect mirror image. However, when you're always looking at the hoops, the short one will be on the left. And so when you look this way, our short hoop will be on this side, medium on this side, and then of course, tallest in the center. And so there we go. That is the Quidditch pitch now 100% complete. And my gosh, I'm having so much fun just flying around this Quidditch pitch. You can literally just be Harry and go around it's so, so much fun. Honestly, it will provide you with endless enjoyment with you and your friends. And so that will conclude this series. I really hope you enjoyed building the Quidditch page alongside me. And if you did, a like and subscribe would be hugely appreciated. It really does support the channel. And of course, if you get stuck at any point, then do feel free to join my Discord server and I can try and help you out in there. And so that is the end of this Quidditch pitch tutorial, but do let me know down in the comment section if there are any other videos you would like to see from me. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for an Azkaban tutorial, and so it definitely is on the table because it's actually quite 
easy for me to do a tutorial on because it is just a giant triangle so maybe I can just whip out a quick tutorial on Azkaban. But one thing I am working on is I really want to build Hogsmeade Station and add that to my main Hogwarts map. So I definitely want to get some building videos out in the future because those are much, much more fun for you to create and edit and I have a lot of fun with them. And so that's all for me today and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!